Do you have favorite writing tools or supplies that you cannot write without? Today I'm going to tell you about my top 5 writing tools and how I use them to write my novel. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Sylvia's Writing Nook, the place where we talk about writing, creativity and how to get the life that you want. My name is Sylvia and I am an aspiring writer currently working on my English debut novel. Camp Nano has just begun and it's the perfect time to share with you my top 5 writing tools that I use to write my novel. These tools can be used for every writing project no matter fiction or non-fiction. So, if you plan to write something during Camp Nano or in the near future, this episode is just for you. The first two things that I cannot write without are my notebook and a pen. Even though I write the actual manuscript on my computer, I'm way more creative when I'm using pen and paper. I actually cannot brainstorm ideas without a pen and paper. It doesn't matter what the paper will be. Sometimes I use just some loose sheets of paper and then gather them in a binder, sometimes I use big notebooks and sometimes smaller ones. The pen and paper are most useful when I need to draw a mind map. For this I use either a sheet of blank paper or a big notebook to have enough space to draw. But I also use my notebooks to write some ideas about my characters, plot, the crime, the suspects, etc. When I start writing, I type everything useful in my Scrivener project, but I keep to use the notebook. Every time I feel that I'm stuck on a scene or have to brainstorm new ideas, I open my notebook and write there. Then again I transfer everything that can be used on my computer. Sometimes there are ideas that will lead to a dead end, so I leave them only in my notebook. But if at some point I decide that one of those will work for my novel, I write it and keep it in my Scrivener project. The next essential tool that I cannot write without is my whiteboard. I bought a magnetic whiteboard so to be able to do both, write and pin notes on it. When I'm brainstorming, I use the whiteboard to write different ideas on it that can always be in front of me when I look at it. I also sometimes use the whiteboard to draw mind maps. When it comes to plotting and seeing the big picture of my novel plot, the whiteboard is priceless. I pin cards on it with different colors for the different plot points or just create a visualization of the different plot lines in the story. Although I don't anymore do detailed outlines, I plan to use the whiteboard to track the different plot lines and to search for plot holes after the first draft is ready. And if you are a mystery writer like me, the whiteboard will be very useful to track your crime and to figure out who the murderer is. We all know that on TV detectives use whiteboards, put pictures of suspects on them and draw lines for the different relations between the people. The mystery writer is something like a detective. As a matter of fact, the mystery writer is simultaneously a criminal and a detective. So you must figure out how you will kill your victim and at the same time try to figure out how the detective will solve the crime. So, use your whiteboard to plan and to solve the crime. Although it's not the typical writing software, Trello can be very useful to plan your novel or any writing project that you have. Some people use it for plotting and outlining, but I prefer Scrivener for this. Instead, I use Trello for what it is created – project management. I create a new board for every writing project that I'm working on or plan to work on. Then, on every board I create four different lists according to the different stages of the writing process. So I have one list for writing, one for editing, one for publishing and one for promotion. In every list I create cards for the different tasks. So for example, on the writing list I have tasks such as theme, characters, major plot points, the crime, the suspects and so on. On every card 
I create a list with subtasks and add a description. Sometimes when I have an idea, I write it as a command. When I'm ready to begin working on the project, I set due dates for every task and connect the board to a calendar. The best about Trello is that you can assign tasks to other people. So let's say that you send your novel to better readers. You can ask them to join Trello and send them a task to read the novel. The manuscript itself can be attached as a file from your Google Drive account. Your better readers will see their task and they can also comment on it. So it can be used for a communication as well. The next essential tool that I use is of course Scrivener. I don't know how did the writers in the past write their novels without Scrivener. This software is so useful. It has so many features that you cannot explain them in such a short time. But with a few words, if you've never used this software, imagine it as your file cabinet. Every novel is a separate project and every project is something like a big binder. You can store information in different files and folders and the best thing is that everything is in one place. So if you have a folder for your research and a folder for your manuscript, when you sit down to write, you can see these two folders simultaneously. You can easily switch from one to another or open files from the different folders and see them side by side. Scrivener has a separate feature called the corkboard, which is exactly this, a big and endless corkboard where you can pin notes for the different points in your plot. You can use these cards only for outlining or if you add a description you can use Scrivener to create for you a synopsis. Every folder and file in your project can be seen as a corkboard card. So if you are like me and like to write first and then to do the plotting, you can write your scenes or chapters, turn on the corkboard view and write a short description of each scene or chapter. Then you can rearrange them to do the perfect plotline. The best thing is that if you move a card to a different position, the whole text that's within this chapter or scene is also moved. You can also create labels for the different files and folders and color code them. And as I know, the new Scrivener can show you the corkboard cards grouped by their labels so you can easily track the different plot lines in your novel. And these are only the basic features of Scrivener. You can do a lot more with it. You can use it for your academic writing, add references and so on. In fact, the first time I used Scrivener was when I was writing my dissertation. I needed a software that's not very expensive and that could work with Cyrillic fonts and Scrivener was the answer for me. The last tool that I use for my writing is called Grammarly. You can add it as a Chrome extension or work directly on their website. Grammarly is a very useful tool that I am constantly using for my blog posts and I plan to use it for my manuscript after I finish it. With Grammarly you can check your spelling, word usage and grammar and be sure that everything that you wrote is without any mistakes. As I said, you can add it as a Chrome extension and check every text that you write online. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with Google Docs, but there is an alternative. You can open Grammarly website where you have several options. You can paste your text into the editor, you can write it directly in the editor, or you can just upload the file and Grammarly will check it and show you the mistakes. These are my top 5 writing tools that I use and I think that they can be very useful. Let me know in the comments below which are your favorite writing tools. Do you use one of these or maybe prefer something else? If you liked this episode, no matter whether you are listening or watching it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget that you can subscribe easily. Just click the subscribe button and if you are on YouTube, the notification icon and you'll never miss a new episode. 
You can also check my blog at sylviawritingnook.com where you can read the transcripts from my YouTube videos and podcast episodes. I also created a Facebook group to support and help each other. It's called the Mystery Writers Community, but you can join it even if you're not a mystery writer. So be sure to follow me on Facebook and to check the group. And of course, during Camp Nano I plan to use my IGTV channel for my writing video diary, so be sure to follow me also on Instagram. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them here or write me at authorsylviaradkova at gmail.com. All the links will be listed down below. Until next time, bye!